this is a mass casualty situation. Grab and pull, grab and pull. Grab and pull. Get them both out now. Help! Was an active shooter. Help me! Went through the door and immediately there was a casualty in the hallway. The adrenaline started going right then and there. We got, a guy over here, hey. we got another one down in here. We got a guy with a device over here on the floor. Hey! Set up into two separate teams of police officers with three EMS personnel each. Move in, move in, move in, move in. It was our job to start doing a search and rescue. All right, tourniquet. Collecting casualties. New casualties ready to move. We were clearing rooms along the way. Keep a hand on him. Stay down. There was mass casualties in an ICU. I need a medic when I can. Possible suspect with a gunshot wound. Medic up. We started getting the walking wounded out as quick as possible. We're good, we're good, we're going out. As soon as everybody was cleared out, it's all clear. we formed up again and headed back out. out. Some of the best training ever. We are at the old University Hospital complex. This particular building has a lot of different floor plans and they replicate very well the kind of building that first responders might end up in an active shooter type environment. For this exercise, we're gonna assume shots fired, parties down. In an active shooter situation, <laughs> the officer's sole focus is on neutralizing that threat. Protecting lives is the number one priority. It was really crazy because they actually came out with rifles or ammunition. The police! Can you crawl to me? And actual bombs. Coming up, coming up, coming up. <laughs> I really didn't expect that. I can walk, I can walk, I can walk. I can walk, I can walk. What we're trying to do is really test their limits. Please help me, help me. We want to make sure that they stop the killing spree. <laughs> At the same time, we want our officers, our EMS, and our fire personnel to enter these dangerous situations, these hot zones, and extract injured parties as quickly as possible and save lives. There's no fire EMS law enforcement, okay? Everybody here is going to be responsible for taking care of these victims. Do something, you know, if you got three officers in a room and you're all standing there watching <laughs> blood pumping out and everybody's going, where's the firefighters? You got three minutes till they're dead, so. My role is I'm a guy who got a shotgun shell to the back. The makeup was such that when I saw the wound, I panicked, knowing it was makeup and an actor. <laughs> We're providing some special effects makeup. We've got some lacerations, some bullet wounds, alcohol pigments, latex, blood, blood, more blood, a severed finger that we haven't found a use for yet today. We're going to be placing a kind of small flesh wound on his cheek. It looks like it's going to sit pretty nice right around here. More adhesive to kind of help seal the edge and, in theory, keep it from popping up. Next, we're going to do a little painting with the alcohol pigment, make it more um, dramatic. Then I'm going to grab some blood gel. That's going to make it look disgusting. Close your eyes for me, please. You're all set. <laughs> We do a lot of horror movies and things like that where it's all in good fun, but knowing that these guys are training for a real-life situation is kind of sad. Police, can you come to the sound of our voice? You see a lot of mistakes. I mean, there's a lot of mistakes, but that's good because you remember those. Do we have any more medics coming? I think the biggest mistake that uh, our team made, we spread ourselves way too thin, too fast. We've got three more victims in here. Got to a point where we were outside of a room of casualties <laughs> without paramedics and, and we stalled. Help me! Do something! We have one here that's still bleeding. Help! We have one here. No pulse, can you hear me? No pulse, no pulse. Once we got on the other side of that door, it was like, God, I wish we didn't wait. We got three people who have to wait five, ten minutes for a tourniquet to get put on. We're dragging out dead bodies. You can see the arterial bleeding, and it wasn't going to stop until you did the right first aid, so we shouldn't have stalled. We should have went in there right away and did what we could have done. That's going to be one of the lessons that I've learned out of today. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! The exercise is critically important. Do we clear the right? To bring 50 different agencies from across the metro area together. To wrap around? Really, this is about preparedness. Jones, clear. You have to with you. get the training. Go. And then practice that training. There's a device inside of room 378. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. We got a hostage situation here. When it does happen. Is it this one? If you're not even somewhat prepared. Police! Hey, step out, step out, step out! It's really going to be a soup sandwich for you, so. Step out! If we don't do this more often. Nobody's going to kill you if you do what you're told. We're going to lose those skills that we get taught. And This is the stuff that you remember. Go to the ground! Go to the ground! We need to do this kind of training a lot more often. Yo, medic up. All right, let's go, guys. I got you with. In a scenario, in a scenario. 